We don't even, we never plan this stuff. It uh, just all kind of flows yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, like, really oh, well. What we say to each other cannot be divisive. Gosh, I just think that when we get so focused on walking the line and just we miss so much of God's creativity. We actually, we only created the odd show to have this conversation. Right. We're going to say some bad things about stuff. If you're not bad huge, things, like, if you're a huge Toby Mac, turn it off now. For, for people who are struggling with why would a God of the universe care about me individually, you are his favorite. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is The Odd Show. Let's get right into it. Here's your hosts, Bruce Bugano and Thomas Hogan. Um, I don't even know if this will It's going to show up on my timeline, and then I don't know if I'll be able to download it. So it may be for nothing. Like, it may be for not. Um, so, so just so that's kind of out there. Um, anyway. I am just coming off of a, well, eight-hour drive, but over the last couple of days, a 14-hour drive, 15-hour um, drive. So I'm exhausted. So we are going to um, make this as short as possible. <laughs> We're going to make this as short as possible. Um, I just wiped off the comments, too, because it was distracting. It's super distracting. I haven't done a Facebook Live in forever. Anyway, um, so welcome to The Odd Show. This is actually the first time that we are going live on Facebook in a long time. And definitely the first time yeah. on my stream. I think since, and... since the 4th of July, I think. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so wow. Uh, definitely the first time on my stream. And I don't even know if I'll be able to download the video to put on YouTube, to put on our website, to put on iTunes. So, I have no idea how this is going to happen. I have no idea how any of this te technology is insane. I have no idea how any of this works. Happy... Kind of Easter, everyone. Happy, happy Resurrection Day. The asylum. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, no, I, I hope I hope I hope all the real Christians enjoyed Passover. I mean, um, the biblically the biblically aligned Christians. I hope they all. I hope they all enjoyed Passover. Passover. That that and the Jews. Um, Passat. Uh, anyway, um, we'd have probably gone to Passover except we're in sunny South Dakota, so. So fun. this is a. Uh, I also want to let the audience know the the you know whatever the audience ends up being that this is not a normal show, no, no. topic. I mean, I guess we have a little bit of a topic. No, we're but... going to talk about the book. Yeah, no pre-show no. though. No, like, hey, let's work through this. Let's figure out no. what to do. So we're totally. So, so everything's going to be off the cuff and probably wrong. Right. If you know anything about um, the show, this will probably like doing it this way will probably shut us down. There probably won't be any shows after this. <laughs> Um, That's how we do. And, every show is the last show guys every show right um but i actually was sad that we were driving today as well on, on easter like because if you're familiar with the show like when we talk about going to church and how we're kind of working our way out of church um i'm still fully engaged in the church very much um thomas is not Thomas doesn't care about going to church because his wife's not there, so he definitely doesn't go <laughs> at all. Uh, okay. Untrue. Untrue. <laughs> um, That's but, not true at all. I love, uh, I love church. More church. New not, church, people. I'm not even joking about this. My favorite day of the year to go to church is on Easter um, because there's just something about uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection, just hearing messages on that that, that gets me and and I yeah, enjoyed you, that. You, if you don't hear the gospel the rest of the year, you will hear it today. Right. And that's what <laughs> if you go to a church that talks about your finances and how your marriage needs to be better, you're going to hear the gospel Easter Sunday. Right. And so favorite day of the year, um, favorite day of the year to go to church for me is Easter. Um, and consequently, coincidentally, consequently, I don't know. There's a word Conse that means. Um, Conse <laughs> consequently. Um, we're, we're going to talk about actually, um, uh, church restarting and we, we kind of, did you read the whole book, Thomas? We're gonna, no, we're no, gonna no. Talk I, did about not, I, did not, I read, I read the highlights and what I thought might be beneficial. Like I was reading it from a different perspective than you are. I think, I think I was reading it because I thought there, there are things in there that I want to extract. 
that I that I think are val- valid in the sense of you need to get people ready to deconstruct. You need to you, there's a there's a build up there for some people. Sure. So we're going to talk about a book called Dying to Restart, and it's by a guy named Greg Wines. Um, or Weens and Dan Turner. Uh, they're part of Exponential. Um, love Wayne, Exponential. The Brothers love Ferguson. Exponential. Um, yeah, the Ferguson Brothers. I so Thomas shoots me this book and was like, "Hey, you know, scan this book, read it. Um, it's about choosing to let your church die um, in order to restart it." out of that death, like resurrected. It's very biblical in the, it's, in the it's, that it uses. it's very biblical in the sense that it's about dying. <laughs> right. And then resurrecting. Um, so the, the premise that I used for reading the book was a long time ago, I think it might've been John Acuff or someone was just like, Hey, there's no, the, the only rule for reading a book is if you don't like it, stop reading it. Like you're not obligated to right. read a book all the way through if you, if you don't like it. Um, and that's and how I felt. There are things about the book that I kind of skipped over. I was like, oh, this isn't important to me. Right. So um, so it's not that I didn't like the book in general, but it, it was kind of not useful for what I – like, I read it, and I was like, oh, this is more of the same when it comes to church planning. So uh, I tried to be um, – <sighs> unbiased when I read it, like, oh, I know that this is going to be talking about starting a church, um, which I'm not about. Like, I don't care about that necessarily. Um, but as yeah. I read it, I was like, oh, the, the church already started. What are you going <laughs> to, the church started. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus, know, yeah. Jesus, said, uh, Jesus said on this rock, I will build my church. And so I don't have to build it. I'm, I'm good. Right. So, so. <laughs> This is about starting I'm just an organization saying, I'm where, just, no, no letters. No, totally. This is about starting an organization where people gather to do church stuff. Is that <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So so as I read it, I was like, eh, like I'm not okay. I I'm not a, like this is not stuff that I'm it's more of the same. It was more of the same. It was just about like when church got the whole premise of the book is there are points in the life cycle of the organization that we call church. Um, there's points that they reach in their life cycle where they're not coming back. Like they use terms like old age and death <laughs> and, and in the life cycle of the church, they're not coming back. They're going to die. And either you let it die and do nothing with it, or you can choose to be strategic in the way that you approach that and rebirth something out of it. Um, that's different. Yeah. And as I read it, I was like, oh, it's not different. Like, it's not like you're literally just making another church that caters to potentially a different um, market. Market. Right. And I, I think that that's my that would be my critique of all church planting slash movement books, barring a few for the last 10 years, I would argue that as I've, as I've transitioned away from my life being all about what the church does and church stuff, um, which nothing wrong with church stuff, love. I never want to give the impression or put out the idea that church is bad and I don't want to have anything to do with it. I, I, I feel like there's a point in your life whenever you have to, um, accomplish mission, whatever that is, whatever that looks like. And for some people, that's literally, I've got to go to Uganda or I've got, you know, God's called me to learn Russian and go preach the gospel to the, to the Russian people. Or, um, I've got to start this food bank and feed these hungry people or that you've got to obey the mission that God has for you. And there are certain versions of church that are so, all encompassing in your investment and your capability that you can't accomplish that mission and do church that way. Um, so I, as I've, as, as me and my family have kind of disconnected from full-time church ministry, we, we, it's obvious uh, whenever you enter a situation where I am building a paradigm of four walls, legacy, 
dynastic religion, right? So I, I'm I'm building that. That's what I'm into. That's what I'm trying to uh, make happen. Which I'm not against. I'm not doing it. That's not that I'm against it. Because I think that there's some a lot of valid, important stuff in there. Uh, I'm just not about it, right? So it, it's it's a it's not that it's a waste of my time. It's not what I have to focus on. And so when I read books like this that are kind of really trying to drive home this idea that, oh, there's a better way or there's a different way to do this church thing. And and I think that maybe some people are called to that church thing, right? I think maybe God builds something inside of people where they need to be a part of that environment and a part of that ministry work and a part of like the children's stuff. And the, there's, there's all goodness there to be had not my, not necessarily my um, thing. Right. And so I never want to give out, give off the impression that the church people are wrong or bad or uh, not, not a part of the kingdom that God's building. I think that they're very much each individual Christian is a part of the kingdom God's building. And And even some people not, not even in that world are part of the kingdom that God's building. And I don't want to get distracted by, I have to do it this way to to fulfill whatever God's called me to do. I feel like if you run hard after Jesus and just try to do everything that God has asked you to do personally, not communally, well, I want to say it communally, not directed by somebody else's vision, right? If if you have right. a vision yourself and you're fulfilling it, then you're going to accomplish whatever it is God that God wants you to do. And if you don't have a vision, then you're going to fulfill someone else's vision. And that's what I felt right. like being a part of church ministry for so long, that's what I felt like I was fulfilling a lot of other people's vision and, and, and becoming less and less capable of fulfilling the vision God had put in my own heart. Right. No. Yeah. Um, so just kind of on the premise of the book, like, I don't want to, so I went into reading this book knowing like the Ferguson's exponential is about planting churches in the traditional sense, in the way that, mm -hmm. um, in the way that most churches are planted today, you know, there's a, there's a, right. a core visionary, right. And he rallies a team around him and they go to some new hip, cool place. And, um, it's and not a church. It's like a coffee house or, a. it's like yeah. a, it's like, <laughs> it's like a hangout, you know, there's, right. there's couches instead of pews and <laughs> right. So, and you know, and before that they do fundraising for a couple of years and they get, you know, they, like, and they come in with all these resources and, <laughs> have a small seven, eight person team. And then, and then it grows to 200 within their first year. It might, so. Right. They hit the milestones. Right. Exponentials about planting churches that disciple people for the purpose of multiplying and planting more of those types of churches. Multiplying churches. Right? That's what they are so, about. So if you're like, Oh, I'm, like I want to get with exponential about planting home churches. They're not about that. Like that's not, the model that yeah right. now so like, small groups within a church right but that's a ministry they want you to plant small groups within a church that's a ministry right. inside a church. that's not a church they uh, want you to build a church of home church or church of small groups just a secret uh people meeting in your home can absolutely be a church uh no 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 i'm gonna go a step further because I, I like i'm a i'm a habitual line stepper <laughs> A church in a, a group of Christians in your house is a church. Right, right. No, yeah. I don't care what you call it. Um, it's a church. No, I agree. With that, that. Not oh. is not a church. It is the church. Right, right. So the plants are doing it wrong. Right. Is that what, is that what you're saying? No, so I'm saying they're doing backwards. I would say they're what they're trying to accomplish. They want to multiply a system of church instead of a. Uh, uh, a life of discipleship or a life of discipline towards the gospel. Right. And once, like, what I've seen is once they realize, oh, we need something that actually resembles discipleship, that's when they bring in home groups or small groups or whatever uh, as a means to. Right. To accomplish that. Yeah, no, because, because I can't I can't teach discipleship in an hour and a half sermon and preach the gospel and get your finances in order and get you to tithe. That's right. I just, it's, you're, that's impossible. You should have started <laughs> with the tithe part. You should have started with the tithe part. <laughs> you uh, all, well, I should always start with the tithe part. Um, uh, I skip over it a lot. We're going to do 16 weeks on tithe. <clears throat> um, 
Right. We're, we're going to do 16 weeks on this thing that's mentioned in the Bible. Couple times, two times. But I will tell you, but I, but I, I'll be sure to tell you to love people. I'm sure. Right. So, so I went into this book knowing, okay, this is what they're about. And as I read it, I was just like, oh man, like it's the same. It's more of the same. And and so they use this idea in the book um, that <laughs> that resurrect, like letting something die. Um, and then resurrect and then and then doing the work to um, allow it to be resurrected into something different. But really what it's being resurrected into is a different version of the same thing. Right. Right. So. Um, so so at the end of the day, it's not this. So. Most of what he uses is okay. There's this church that's been around 30 years. Um, there's 12. There's 12 members left. Uh, they are, uh, you know, 20 members left. They're okay with doing church the way that they've been doing. They've made a financial plan that will sustain them for maybe the next eight or nine or ten years. Maybe they have a pastor, but he's really disengaged and kind of more engaged with finding community in other places. Um, you could say it this way: he's replaceable. Right. So, so, and, and not because he doesn't care about the church, but he cares about community, like the way they make it sound, like he cares about community more than. Right. And I would argue that there are a lot of, there are now, so speaking to that, to that point in the book, or like, I wouldn't say that point in the book, but that the point that's being made there, um, there are a lot of church, there are a lot of pastors in that position. There are a lot of pastors right. who one-on-one -on -one will tell you, man, I want community. I want to see right. God's people uh, engaged and uh, empowered to go fulfill their mission back in their homes, back with their neighbors, back in their neighborhoods and in the, the areas that they have impact, whether it be business um, or whether right. it be, you know, single moms or whatever that, whatever their area of influence is that I would argue that a lot of pastors are in that position. And that's where the benefit of this book might come out um, that, that if your heart is for that, you need to not be afraid to start preaching the vision. That, that, but the thing is, whenever you get them, they also have to obey a financial plan and a board and, right. and members, and they have to focus well, and they, on. And so and they they're going to that. lose that. Yeah. Um, they talk about that in like in chapter seven it is called restarting with missional DNA. And they talk about right. restarting with, with a covenant that everybody who's <laughs> restarting agrees on. Um, and, and part of that covenant is agreement to bring in a new pastor agreement to, uh, you know, to, uh, um, I'd have to look, but like there's, there's these agreements um, to, to bring in these things and to do these certain things. And then they even talk about how people aren't like, they're going to forget. They're going to, you know, part way into it. They're going to be like, Oh man, I didn't think I actually meant to do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and so I would argue, or not argue, I would outright say we have, as we have um, kind of told this to other people, especially in the church setting. So I would, we'll just use the church setting. We've told people about this and they are so on board, man. People, they're like, yeah, man, I'm passionate about the same thing. That is awesome. I want to be a part of some, a movement like that. And then it comes to opening up your life to people. And right. they, that, so the, I agree what they're saying. You need to have a covenant, except it's, it, that's not, it's not really about, I mean, covenant's important, but it's not about the covenant. It's about the, the society we live in being unwilling to open their lives to each other. Like, I want my secrets to be secret. I want my, my, my pains and my, my struggles to be, and, and, even people who like are open with their struggles are closed with their desires or like their, their purpose or their, their, their calling or whatever. Right. So let me, let it's just, it's over. difficult. It was, it was actually chapter nine and it's the title of the chapter is covering the bases. And he actually says um, it won't be long before members of even the most resolved restart church will begin to backpedal on the need for radical change. So because of that, um, they, they talk about the need for, an approved covenant um, between those members that are restarting. And it was things like a plan, you know, agreement on a plan to rehire the restart pastor, uh, two to three years, a period of coaching for that pastor. The congregation will allow the mission of reaching their community for Christ 
to guide their decisions. Um, if asked by the pastor or denominational leaders, current leaders are required to resign um, a process to determine a new mission and vision with new DNA. And, and kind of as I read through some of this stuff, I'm like, you know, chapter seven talks about um, restarting with a, with a, with a missional DNA. And I'm like, they, they, they talk about like how that DNA comes from God. Like you let God inject that DNA in. And, and all I can think is like, I don't know. I, I don't want to sound cynical, but like, as I read it, I was just like, but where does it come from? Like, like, is it just a guy that's the same before 40 years ago when he planted that church? He was like, I have a vision. I feel like God told me this thing. And then when people come in and they're like, Hey, let's develop this vision. They're like, no, we're not doing that. God gave me no. this vision. This is our DNA. And, and that's why. So in, in the beginning, you started out talking about how it's, they're trying to build a house. They're trying to tear down a house. Right. right. And then rebuild a house the same way. And basically they're tearing down the outside of the house. They want to leave some of the structures in there. They want to leave some of the bones of the house. <laughs> And and well, then and then really rebuild a, a better looking house. You don't even need people necessarily to restart a dying church, but you need resources. So you're going to restructure some of those resources, and that's the foundation. Like like that's the right. You, you know what I'm saying? Like like hey, we do need to no no. Right. Build I get it. So so as I read through it, I was just like you know, and even the DNA stuff. It's just like you need to have a rediscovered mission. The DNA is made up of a rediscovered mission and a, a new compelling vision. And, um, and it, I just like new structures need to be put in place and renewed relationships. And, and it like, as I read it, I was like, it's just, it's just the same thing. You know, like you're building, right. like, like you're rebuilding that house. Right. But it's not going to look like a 1950s, um, you know, farmhouse. Yes. In the suburbs. Yeah. It's, gonna look it's like not going to be like a suburban family home it's going to be right. a new so, trendy so, coffee house it's, home yeah it's, it's going to be you know like there's going to be modular stuff and like um coffee yeah bar you're going to put in a bar and, yeah yeah uh, a coffee bar that doubles as a craft beer brewery tap house right uh, so so for me as i like and 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 throughout the book they talk a lot about ministry like doing ministry and we and we've talked before about whether ministry is a thing that you do or it's the premise for how you live your life right like like life right. is ministry versus life is ministry. ministry is a program inside of this organization that i'm part of ministry, ministry um, can't be life or you're gonna you're not gonna have you're not gonna have any room for you know the things that really matter in life but if if your life is ministry, then everything you do. So we've talked. Yeah, we've right. we've had the conversation. We can definitely link to the to that episode that where we kind of went into detail about life as ministry. So anyway, I mean that that's the book. Um, it's I, I felt I felt there was some good stuff in there to be taken out to be extracted. It is a typical my my issue is that, that it's a typical you know, be, don't be afraid of change and new and different strategies to reach people and all that. And, and I'm like, that's, you're not really changing. You're not, you're not doing anything new. You're just trying to do something uh, skewed from what is popular or what is, right. what has been successful in the last 15 to 20 years. And when, when I say that we're going to break off and do GCC, we're just going to love people and, and bring them into our lives and be a part of their lives. That's, that's all my focus. I don't, I don't, so, you know, I want to be, I want to be in sinners lives and saints lives and Buddhist lives and so who can, Christian like, lives. Like, and when you talk about that, like who's capable of doing that? Because like chapter five, uh, I want to kind of get your take on that. Chapter five talks about, do you have what it takes? And the, the whole, um, you know, they open with a quote from this guy named Frederick uh, Burstner, and it says, the place God calls you to is a place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Um, but then they go on talking about, like, a new leader for a new day and um, and calling, you know, is assessments this, and calling. And Is this a on. secret Hitler book? <laughs> sounds like a secret. Sounds like a um, secret white supremacist takeover book. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely not. Um, but but they talk about um, being capable 
right? So like in this structure, because we're talking about an organization, you have to have what it takes, right? Like you have to be a CEO minded type person. Um, some assessment tests would say psychotic to some degree. Um, uh, <laughs> that is a, that is a fair assessment. Um, right. But, uh, well, I mean, like there's a lot of tests out there that say psychopath and CEOs have the same character traits. So, um, right. They're sociopaths. Sociopaths. Maybe right. psychopaths. I've met some psychopathic. I don't think they're, I don't think uh, they're it's psychopathy. It's sociopathy. <laughs> So so you're asking who can do it. You're asking who can do it. I'm going to tell you right now that I I know this is probably going to be the most controversial thing we say. Uh, People who are, whose, whose sole purpose is to make Sunday happen cannot do that. But not that they're bad. It's not that they're bad at it. It's that their attention isn't even on it. It is hard to be in the lives of other people when you're constantly focusing on that thing that that's uh, right. doing some making Sunday happen. And not that it's a bad thing. Those, there are a lot of good people so, that need Sunday. So would you say not even just focus on making Sunday happen? If Sunday is the thing in your life, when it comes to your, if, if Sunday is the thing in your Christian life, right? If your faith community is outside of those Sunday walls, happens. gospel-centered community outside of those walls will be difficult. Like you, you probably aren't going to break now, right away from uh, it. Yeah, I have a caveat. I think that a lot of people aren't. They're not there to make Sunday happen. They're there to be a part of Sunday. I think that there's room for the for those people. They they show up. You know, I I would say. The people who come in late, they, they don't like the worship, so they come in after that to hear the sermon and feel, you know, whatever. And then <laughs> those people, I think that there's, that there are people that aren't, that are not a part of church world that tolerate church world because they see some value in it, but then they go out and live their lives away from church world. And I would say that those people have a easier access to their lives being open to actual people, real people in the real world than people who, whose life is to make Sunday happen. And I'm like, there there are six more days that you're going to have to function in a, in the real world. (laughs) And, And that's where the power of God and the love of God and the, the need for God exists. And Sunday doesn't have that. Now that's unfair. Sunday has that too. It's just in a different degree. It has it. Right. It's like a FUBU situation for Christians by Christians, but, but, but for what, <laughs> but for what, you know? And so I think that uh, who can do that? Who can, who can, you know, we, we've been saying for the last several years, unchurched and de-churched. I think that that's where, that's where we, that's where I put my focus, you know, for the next 10 years of my life, or I think it's eight years actually, but for the next 10 years of my life to focus on how are we going to love the unchurched and de-churched? How are we going to connect with them? People who are tired of church and don't want to do it anymore, or people who have never experienced church, so they're not poisoned by the silliness of it all. Um, I say poison. That's a bad word to use. Um, who are not distracted, horrible. right? Right. Who are not distracted by the uh, work of ministry? Because is 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 it the ministry of reconciliation, or is it the ministry of uh, a better video team and a better soundboard and a better oh, microphone nice. system? Yeah. Is it a better a better parking uh, system or? Is it the ministry of reconciliation? And how are we bringing hearts that are far from God closer to him? And I think that sometimes we, like Christians, like to pretend their lives are in, well, not, not pretend. Christians sometimes exaggerate their, their um, sinner life. You know, oh, I had bad thoughts or, oh, I right. did, you know, <laughs> you know I, I did, you know, I cut off this person in the traffic or I, you know, I had this. But really, there are people out there like struggling with real addiction, like dis- de- life destroying, right. marriage ending, kid leaving <laughs> problems. And that's where the power of God needs to be evident. And, and whenever you get focused on doing church stuff, um, you, you kind of miss that. You kind of miss out on it, it a little bit. So. Right. It I becomes mean, about church. And, and, like and then you know, you're, and you're, you're literally, you're trying to convince other people to come do that. Like, 
you're not finding right. freedom. I, I'm not arguing that this isn't all Christians, but uh, some Christians are not finding freedom in Christ. They're not finding purpose for their lives. They're not finding passion for mission that, that God's created them for. And then you're trying to convince other people to come not have passion, not their, their right. marriage is not to be reawakened, their their relationship with their kids not to be. You're trying to convince them to come do that. And they're like, man, your life is falling apart. Like, what do you <laughs> Right. What do you mean to and come have my yeah. life fall apart too? My life's falling to apart, but I don't feel bad. Them. I don't feel guilty about it like you do. Right. right. It's easier to have somebody else tell them that they're messed up than to to, to sit in their life, invite them into your home, and 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 right. And, all and so, that. if you have people, if you, and that's why and that's why I, I'm not too hard on church people because church people do have small groups, and those small groups, in some cases, are in your house, and they have an opportunity to you know, speak to you and see you in, in, in a kind of uh, unfiltered environment, somewhat unfiltered environment. Yeah. And, I, and I think so, some churches, like my wife, you turned off, um, you turned off notifications because it was I'm distracting. Really but my wife said that there are some people in churches that are desperate for community. And I agree. I, I think that this book might be beneficial for, leaders in that setting that where you feel like I have this vision for uh, a gospel com a community of people that just want to do whatever God wants them to do in right. their context, in their lives there. I think there's room in this book for that. I, I, but I think that if you're leaving the structure of church altogether and saying, what else is there? Is there something else that God wants to do? That's not building a building. That's not building a team of, um, you know, ministry makers. Um, it, it, then, then I don't, I don't think you're going to find it here. I think you, you know, you'll find it. There's some good stuff in there. I, I got some good stuff in it, but you're not going to find it in, in a lot of these books. And I think, honestly, you're not going to find it in any book if you get right down to it. Until you find a few people that your heart connects with, like me and you, we're like, okay, what is it? What would it look like if we just loved people in the context we're in, in the, in the families and the relationships and the neighborhoods we're in. And if we go to church, we go to church. And if you don't go to church, you don't go to church. That has nothing to do with connecting with people in a real meaningful way. Yeah. So I think probably safe to say that if you are in that place, especially if you're in that place where um, you're part of a congregation that doesn't know where they're going, that vision has been lacking, that um, you're on the, the tail side that, you may not be around because I mean, lots of churches close their doors every day and, and that's it. Like there's nothing else after that. If you're in that place, this is a good, um, this is a good book for that. Like how do we, how, right. How I think it does. Prep, right. I think it preps your heart. At least it doesn't really prep your life at all, but it preps no, your no. heart to, to accept the idea that, maybe there's a better way to do this in the well, way. And the thing is, it really comes down I, to you being willing to walk away well, from it a little I, bit. I, I would, I would say that this book is going to do nothing for you. If you're in a place where you're like, no, 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 we're okay. We where we're at, even though there's only eight people right. in your congregation, this book, if you're at a place where you realize right. we need to do something else, because this is not <laughs> working. Um, we're going to die. This book is beneficial for that. And it actually has a pretty decent um, step by step, like go through this process. Here's how you get to that end, um, and 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 kind of gives you the ability or gives you some steps for being able to talk to um, the people in your in that congregation for right. moving towards that end of re of restarting. Um, yeah, I so. think that there's a dark secret though that you're going to get frustrated with the capability of a church that is moving in a certain direction to stop and reevaluate itself and, right. and, and, and redirect that. Like, I think that you're going to quickly find. Yeah. But I think you're going to quickly find that it's, it might be easier for you to leave and go be a part of a community of people where you can be, where you can at least test those ideas than it would no. be for you to sit there and rail and convince those people to do it your way or not even your way to, to say what, what do you think really, really God wants us to do here? Well, and that, and that's the thing, like it's a, like this book will give you an, uh, will help you kind of talk through some stuff, some of that stuff with the congregation. But at the end of the day, if the congregation yeah. stuck, um, 
then that's it. I asked like, what the book was. Uh, the book is uh, Sheila. Sheila, the book is Dying to Restart. Um, so it's by Dan Weens and Greg, I forgot his name, uh, but Dying to Restart. It's an exponential, exponential. Dying book. to Restart, yeah. And it was um, actually, it was on it was free on it was free on Amazon and somewhere else um, for several days, and then and then I got the PDF version, so sent it over to you. Right. So um, so anyway, it's it's a good book for that purpose. If you're at a place where you're just frustrated with church, it will do nothing for you. If you're at a place where the congregation, <laughs> it will it will it will make you more frustrated. I think possibly. Yeah. Um, if you're at a place where the congregation is not willing to accept um, that things are not going well and that they're not pulling out of it, you know what I'm saying? Like you're defib and I'm you're like clear and nothing's happening. Um, and the congregation's like, no, 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 no we can right. still save them. Um, not, not a book. That's gonna <laughs> it's been four days. Surely, surely Lord, he's thinking. Right, right, right. Um, so other than that though, um, good book for what it is. I like Exponential. Like I love the stuff that they put out. Um, and but they just know that they are geared towards church planning for multiplying churches, and that's a good thing for what it is. Um, that's not where I'm at. So I really did hold fast to the advice that says if you're not into a book, stop reading it because you're not obligated to that author. So I stopped reading it. <laughs> Look, I one thumbs it up, one thumbs down. Like I went through it, but I was like, I'm not going to dedicate. I dedicated three days to it and was like, eh, I'm not going to do it. So, so, so having said that, like, cause I think that there's, like I said, I think there's valuable stuff in there, not to do what it says, but to see what it's saying. Um, sure. What would you say? Well, so if it's church, right. It, <laughs> What would you say is the what What would you say is the step forward if you want to step into community? If whether it's whether it's a part of church or outside of the church, what would you say is the is is the right way to prepare for that? Because this book is trying to get you to say, "Hey, maybe the way we're doing church is wrong, and there's a there's a better way to do it," which is kind of true. Well, so I don't think the book's saying that. I think the book's saying the way that you've done church is done. Right, right. It's over. Um, and, and you are now um, on the cusp of death, um, you need to consider something new. You need to do something else. Um, so I don't think it's saying the way that you've done it is wrong. I think the book is saying the way you're doing it now is the same way you've always been doing it, and it's not beneficial for what it's not. We're going it's not life breathing. Right, right. Right. So, so your question was, what would I say? What? What was your question? What, what would you What would you say are practical steps towards a resurrected view of community and church and being a part of God's of being a part of God's family, being a part of what God what it means to love and follow Christ together? You know, you're you're reading Bonhoeffer right now, so you're already your mindset's already kind of there. I don't want to I don't want to yeah. guide that question too much, but you know, there's no. there's like a, a small no. audience, so I really. I don't know, man. Like I've been kind of wrestling with that for the last few years. Um, and you guys are farther along than I am for sure. I, so I'm really, so I am, I'm reading Bonhoeffer life together, which is a great book. Angie loves Bonhoeffer life together. She said, read it, um, which I was already on my list, but I'm also <laughs> writing a book on loving each other. And I really think um, being together with other people with other Christians um, is the, is the basis for all of that. Like, so um, I don't think, I think you can, I think you and your wife can decide, Hey, we're going to reach this community and you're going to go do your thing in the community and you're going to get tired and you're going to get worn out. And eventually um, your resolve might waver. Like you might be like, ah, oh, man, like, ah, oh, we're just so tired. Like, and, and you either press through or, or you give up. Right. Um, right. But I really believe like if you find that group of people that you can, even if it's just two or three other couples or families that you can really just become deeply connected to in relationship and practice the new command to love each other, um, that will be rejuvenating and energizing enough to go out and do the thing that would tear you 
down and make you exhausted if you did it by yourself. Um, yeah. So, so I really think that a first step to that is, um, is finding those two or three other people that are going to be committed to just figuring out how to love each other well. Um, and seeing what that means. Um, I really think the new command is the, the basis of the new command is, is love, you know, love each other as I've loved you so that they'll know that you're mine, love each other. Right. Um, I think the basis, the whole premise of that is so that you can learn to be loved and love like, and that only happens in Christian community that only happens with other Christians because and even Bonhoeffer says it, but I just, I just wrote on this that there's a threshold to your ability to love people without Christ. Um, that there's this other realm that you enter for your capability to extend love and forgiveness and mercy and grace to other people um, that only Christ empowers you to do. Um, outside of that, you can't. Like, like Right. So I think it's, it's, really, it's really important not to miss the, the, the piece of that, though, that is through others. Like Christ... It's not right. you sitting alone with a Bible or you right. sitting alone praying that gets you strong enough to do that. It's you being in an environment where people are flawed and you're flawed and yeah. God fills in the gaps. Yeah. And that, and that's the thing is like, it doesn't matter. So it's not like, you. it's not like, cause some people would say, well, I can just go read the Bible by myself. I can go do Bible study on my own no, right. or even with women. Yeah, that works is dead. Right. I mean like right, right. The, the whole but, premise. But, Life without life without community isn't really life, though. So that's right. what I'm trying to get at. That you need no, those other people to test that. Like you need other people to test you, really. Like you need right. other people to push your limits of forgiveness and your limits of of um, tolerance, and that, and, right? And that's what I'm saying. Like learning to be loved, but also learning to love happens in Christian. Like like right, you, right. You, you, look, when I, before I got married, before, before me and my wife got married, I had this really solid idea of what it meant to be a husband and what marriage should look like. And then I got married. Um, and I was just like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, then crap. I got married. I was like, oh, this is, um, I, did I, I did not know I was selfish. No one, that she should be doing no one it. wanted to tell me that I was selfish. Like that was, it, it, it but, took me getting no, married. I, but I, I had it figured out. Like I was just like, there is a way to do this. And, um, and then I got married and my wife was like, I don't agree with that. Like, you, like in theory, that works, um, but that's stupid. Stop doing it. And I was just like, but I studied it, but I, I wrote it down. Um, right, right. It's, the same, it's, it's right the same here in my journal. Thing. Right, it's yeah. Like, but, right my here. journal. In these notes. Right? I, I wrote a lot. Like, I wrote it over and over. But, but it's the same with Christian community. Like, it doesn't matter how much you sit and learn from the Bible what it means to love others if you don't do it. Like it's useless and, and all the knowledge and real the love. And it's why so many people leave the church unfulfilled because real love hurts you and it allow, but it also teaches you how to come overcome hurt right. and over and, and you stick right. it out. Not because, not because you're, you're willing to be abused, but because you've been abused and you're willing to, to commit to something that gets you past it. Right. And so, well, if we can it, agree it really, that, like, if we can agree I like the covenant. Corinthians 13, if we can agree that First Corinthians 13 is not the wedding chapter, that it actually tells you what love should look like. Yeah, and it tells you what love looks like, not not what it means to love your wife, but what it means to love. Right. And 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 that's the you know, like that's it. Like that's the whole thing of it is love is these things. It's gentle, it's kind, it's uh it's it doesn't um uh, I don't remember. I, I went to Bible school, um, uh, but it doesn't hold. <laughs> yeah, it you know, doesn't keep track of wrongs and like you know what I'm saying. Like it's forgiving. It's all these things, um, and you can only do that inside of Christian community. Um, so that's what I would say. Find people that you can practice what it means to love each so, other, and then love God and love your neighbor are built out of that. Like it, like it really does fulfill those commands like when jesus saying like said i came to fulfill the the law and he said that the law was love the lord your god right. and love your neighbor as yourself like the fulfillment of those laws of the of that law is through this new command to love each other like that's how i'm going to fulfill this so anyway right this totally got into I a agree. different topic and, 
we've been going for 45 minutes. <laughs> sort of. Well, sort of. I mean, you know, I, I think that there's there's a little bit of – there's a there's some room for free form. I feel, you know, we didn't even talk about – we didn't even talk about how – trusting the Holy spirit to build your movement or your community or your church or whatever that that's like this whole other piece of this thing. That's that, that the, these, right. That these books, like <laughs> it's, it's almost like if, if I were to write a book, it would just be a couple of pages long and just talking about what it means to, to trust the Holy spirit to do that stuff. And if you don't trust the Holy spirit, then, then build a system. You should, you should, Oh, that I can't believe you said that. Um, I wouldn't have said that, and that's crazy that you said that. It's it's back now. <laughs> I can't don't even, take it back. Hey, don't even it's, explain it's it. Out don't there. even explain it. Just let it be out there. Sure. If you don't trust the Holy yeah. Spirit, build a system. Uh, I, I agree with that, though. I mean, <laughs> okay. Anyway, no caveats. Um, no caveats. Uh, you know, you know what you should do. Uh, because if you were going to write a book, it'd only be a couple pages long, and you'd write about that. You should just write a note on the the odd show page about that, uh, and then you don't have to write a book. <laughs> well, I mean, but it's going to tick people off though, because I'm like, you know, oh, you want to raise your kids in a in a godly way, then then give them to God, and then they're like, mm, we don't believe you, <laughs> we don't know. Right. Here are these. Here are the twenty rules that we need to f- follow, and then and then watch our kids get further and further from God, and then be mad at ourselves for not having enough faith, or praying through, or discipling correctly, or mad at others for not being available for them. And man, you know that's it's a, it's this circle, man. It, everything in church is kind of like that. Like, how are we going to program this in a way? Where if the Holy Spirit doesn't come through, at least we did all of these things. Well, and it's kind of the same. Premise. <laughs> and I'm like, like, how did the I'll, Holy Spirit not come through? That's the that should be your primary focus. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and say this so people are equally mad at me as they are at you. Um, it's the same <laughs> thing that I've been saying for a couple of years now. Is that if you have to tell people what their sin is outside of their unbelief in Jesus, then you don't trust the Holy Spirit to do it. Like. Because right. Jesus said the world's sin is unbelief, testify to that, and the Holy Spirit will lead them into all truth and understanding. Um, so you need to tell them that there are all these bad things that they're doing and that they need Jesus is you not trusting the Holy Spirit to do what Jesus said he would do. So um, so there's that. Maybe that changes your evangelism, or maybe you're just like the odds so are stupid, not, never the, talking to them again. That's that's only true if you believe the Bible. It, it, there's a lot of <laughs> other ways to interpret it. <laughs> oh, geez. oh, geez. We stop. Um, yep, we, we've stepped on enough toes, I think. So that's it. Uh, so anyway, the book is dying to restart. Check it out. The book is dying to restart. It was, it was, it was really good for what, um, for the purpose of it. And uh, we'll have a link. I'll have a link in the show notes. Um, I'll put a link in the comments. Yeah. Any anything else? Shots. No, I think we might we might try out Facebook Live for a while and see how that works. Yeah. You want to apologize to anybody for the things that you said? No, <laughs> no, no apologies. The G is silent. All right, All right. Um, so that's it. Guys. Stay on. Thank you for watching. Stay on. Thanks for checking out the Odd Show. You can follow Bruce on Twitter at bpags2 and Thomas at Blenders End. Remember to rate and review us on iTunes and share us with your friends. Until next time, stay odd.